We need to address what happened to the S&P 500 futures last night and this morning. See, there was a panic sell-off last night, and anyone who bit the bullet and took the other side of the trade made out like a bandit. Sometimes there's a temptation to believe that these futures traders know more than you do. But you know what? That's really the case. Every time these guys get worked up about how the sky is falling and the bull is finished, you need to ask yourself, what could go right that could catch the pajama traders off guard? Think about these guys doing trades in their PJs. As we saw this morning, they often make some serious mistakes, and sometimes it's pretty predictable to anyone with a cool head. Why? Because the future sellers were basing their moves not on new information, but on belief that investors would panic and sell everything again like they did on Friday. Remember this weekend we heard the president had second thoughts on new tariffs, which momentarily made you think that he wanted to walk back his latest statements about raising the current uh, tariffs and ordering American companies to get out of China. But then his people came out and clarified. In fact, he was having second thoughts because he wishes he had threatened to raise the tariffs even higher. Total confusion reigns. Presumably the pajama traders took that apparent reversal to mean the negotiations with China are even in worse shape than we thought, if that's possible. So they figured Friday sellers would return and they wanted to get out ahead of them. But then in the wee hours of the morning, something, something went right that caught these traders with their pajama pants down. The president announced that China wants to come back to the table. Suddenly, every single future seller from last night was on the wrong side of the trade. As the future spiked higher, of course, the Chinese immediately denied calling him, and most of the media just immediately assumed that Trump was lying. That drove the futures down lower again, cutting the gain in half. But as I told you at the top of the show, I think this he said, she said approach totally misses the point. We know the president watches the stock market. We know the leaders of the G7 are pressuring him to make a deal because the recession in China will wreck their economies, too. Whether China called Trump or Trump called China or no one called anyone, it is in, immaterial. It is an abstraction, people. The fact is, we have a president who doesn't want the market to go down too much, and he's willing to take action to prevent that from happening. Even if it made, made it all up, it still sends stock higher, right? I mean, undeniable, right? Look, I said before, uh, this is the new pattern, and you're fooling yourself if you don't believe in it. That's why it's so dangerous to bet against the market after a big down day. You're running the risk that the president will do something positive that makes you look like a dope. Frankly, I don't think you should be messing around with the futures in the first place. But if you insist on playing that game, remember that it's very easy to get burned when you're just chasing a trend without considering what might happen to cause a reversal. Or to put it another way, pajamas? They're for sleeping in, not for trading. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.